Hey guys, welcome to Kindred Women. This is Amanda here with Tasha Beckwith and we are just going to get to know a little bit about Tasha and we're gonna talk about speaking life and kind of what that looks like. So Tasha, why don't you go and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, well, I am a mom of four, primarily stay at home. I have some um, little things outside of the house, but for the most part, um, I just, myself into my kids and to yeah. my husband and um, and to the ministry opportunities that God puts before me good yeah, yeah. I love that yes yeah. so speaking life mm -hmm. I think it's easy sometimes for us to not speak life mm -hmm. so what why don't you kind of talk a little bit about like what speaking life kind of is for you um, I think speaking life is I mean it, it's the opposite of speaking death we mm -hmm. have the choice yep. to bring positivity, to bring truth, to bring hope into any situation that we are in, and um, or we can do the opposite. And, right. um, and so I believe that God calls us as believers to be looking for opportunities every day, mm -hmm. to just pour truth over um, the lies that the enemy traps yeah. us in, and we need that. Mm -hmm. We do, we mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like speaking life for me is even speaking those things out, like actually saying them out loud, Absolutely. I think it's so easy to think the good thoughts mm -hmm. or even think the, the speaking life type of thoughts mm -hmm. in your mind. Mm -hmm. But then when you speak them out, mm -hmm. I feel like there's so much more power in that. Mm -hmm. So what... Do you, what do you kind of feel like about that? Like well, speaking them actually out loud? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Uh, I, I've heard somewhere that the enemy doesn't, he doesn't know what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the uh, ability yeah. to know what we're thinking. Um, and so we have to speak it out yeah. so that he knows what we're yeah. thinking. Yeah. Um, and that's how we grasp and claim that truth. Mm -hmm. And I think you make a good point that speaking life is as much to ourself mm -hmm. as to other people. Yep. And we have to really, in order to be effective, in um, our gift, um, for the, especially for those of us whose spiritual gift is speaking life, we have to be really effective in first doing that for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then through that, we're able to pour that out into mm -hmm. other people and other relationships. Right, yeah. So we've kind of talked a little bit about spiritual gifts. So what is one of your spiritual gifts and how does that kind of make speaking life kind of come more natural to you? Well, I mean, I, I definitely have I, the, the gift of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, and I think that's why for me, the enemy attacked it as a child, why I, okay. why I first had to conquer, mm -hmm. um, speaking truth over myself yeah. when he would attack my mind and try to hold me captive there. I had to learn, um, that to first take those thought cap those thoughts captive and make them obedient mm -hmm. to what the word says, yeah. what Christ says. And, um, and so, yeah, so as I have walked and I've seen that that is actually, my gift, mm -hmm. um, one of my gifts that um, I've been able to to really grow in that gift mm -hmm. and be more discerning mm -hmm. um, to the Holy Spirit's moving um, as to when I'm to to use it. Yeah, yeah. I think as women, we kind of know what it's like to be in relationships where they're not always speaking life, and it can be easy to even get pulled into that. Mm -hmm. So, how do you feel like? you specifically speak life into the women around you, whether it's your daughters or friends or family? I mean, I think, I think the, that the Holy Spirit prompts us. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, and there's a difference between just giving an encouraging word of, um, you look really nice today. Right. That's yeah. not speaking yeah. life. Speaking yeah. life is speaking truth. Mm, and so um, I think that we just become, we, you, you become aware. And as you are in relationship with people, listening mm -hmm. is a huge component to being able to really speak. Like yeah. we have to humble ourselves first. And I mean, honestly, if we don't first go to the source as, as that being one of my spiritual gifts, mm -hmm. one of the things that the Lord showed me was I, I have to go to the, I, ha I have to be rooted in the source. And although there are people who can come alongside me and speak life to me, I right. think because it's my spiritual gift, I'm even more, needing okay. in that area to have the Lord really pour into mm -hmm. me um, so that I have I don't so that I when I am engaging in those conversations with um, others that I'm not entering into them listening to them with thinking of myself and yeah. does that make sense mm -hmm. so oftentimes yeah. in communication with people 
our flesh reaction is to, as they're speaking, we're thinking of our response. Right, yeah. But if you come into a situation where you are, um, where you, where the Lord wants to use you to be an encourager and to speak life, and you are listening and wanting to then um, use your, like, justify yourself or speak mm -hmm. your own, mm -hmm. your own desires onto yeah. that situation looking for something instead of coming from a place of humility of I've already been filled I can hear what you I can hear what you have to say and I can give to you and not expect anything in mm -hmm. return um, I think that that that's one of the keys um, and so w with regards to those relationships I just I just I try to be intentional yeah. I reach out to um, to my friends as the Lord puts mm -hmm. them on my heart um, you know, and I'm just, I think I'm just, a, I just try to be aware and, yeah, and open yeah. to the Holy Spirit's leading. Yeah. I was going to say that's something that similar to even what I do. Like mm -hmm. I, if, if I'm, you know, during the day and I think for both of us, we don't, because we stay home, we don't have that opportunity to always talk to people, mm -hmm. you know, face to face. Mm -hmm. And so you can't encourage someone that you see in the store all the time because you're not there or you can't encourage people that you encounter at work. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing that I really have just purposed for myself that, you know, if the Lord prompts me mm -hmm. to either pray for someone or to even tell them that you're praying for them, yeah. that's, you know, yes. speaking life too, Absolutely. you know, because then they know that you are speaking life over them mm -hmm. with that prayer that you're giving. And so I do that a lot too, mm -hmm. where I, I hear the Lord saying, you know, oh, how is so-and-so mm -hmm. doing? Mm -hmm. And then I can easily just either text that person mm -hmm. and say, the Lord's kind of put me on, put you on my heart. Mm -hmm. And, and then you kind of go from there and, mm -hmm. and it always opens up that relationship specifically with women mm -hmm. to encourage and to lift up because Golly, sometimes women just, mm -hmm. they aren't nice to each nope. other. Nope, it's so true. Yeah. And I, and I think it, it you know, we you stand out. Mm -hmm. as, yeah. And, and people need to see that. Right. But like, I don't need to, I, and you know, it doesn't need to be awkward either. Right. When you're in group settings and other women are gossiping, we don't have to be the ones who are like, hey guys, don't right. gossip. Yeah. Because yeah. all that's going to do is push people away and make yes. them feel judged. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we can remain quiet. Uh -huh. We can find an opportunity to redirect the conversation. Right. Yeah. Um, or we can speak life into that situation mm -hmm. and, and say, you know, whatever it is, like, we can find an opportunity to speak mm -hmm. life, to, and which will, will which will change the atmosphere yeah. of the conversation yeah, absolutely. without being awkward. Yeah. Um, but I think also as we are, as we learn to obey those promptings mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit, um, that we become more acutely aware of, um, of the power that the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. has in us yeah. and we become more refined in our gift mm -hmm. because I mean, I'm sure you've had the same thing where, um, I, I mean, the Lord might prompt me to reach out to somebody from my past that I'm not really close to right. because I don't really know what's going yeah, on in their life yeah. because of life. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe they've pushed me away, but um, because we're on two different roads, but I will tell you that like so often it's like they receive it mm -hmm. and, and oftentimes it's like, Oh, you know what? Like I needed that yeah, today. Yeah. And, and so when you realize that it's not just like, Hey, they just popped into my mind, exactly. but it's a leading, yeah. then it, you become more, um, open mm -hmm. and therefore like, I mean, it just gives the Holy Spirit has so much more ability than to use you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when you kind of brought up gossiping, Maybe talk about like some of the dangers in that. Well, um, there's a verse that I wanted to share. If I can uh, not drop my phone, <laughs> um, Proverbs fifteen four says, "A soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes a spirit." Mm -hmm. And I think that sums up both sides: yes. speaking life and speaking yep. death. When speaking death would be mm -hmm. gossip. Um, you know, we have people are broken and people are hurting. And just like there's such a power in being someone who brings truth and, and light and hope um, to people, when we when we bring hurt mm -hmm. and and um, fear and um, and we pull people down, we we crush them. Yeah, yeah. And that's what gossip is. Yeah, and you know we might think that it's you know it's lighthearted and it's funny mm -hmm. and it's what women do. But it's detrimental. It ruins right. friendships. Yeah. It ruins your ability to speak mm -hmm. life into people. If if they if they see you gossiping, then then 
they're not going to trust you right. yep. to come to you to to and which gives the Lord an opportunity to use you as a vessel to yep. speak to them and lift them up because they might think that you're probably going to turn around and share right. their information. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's it's very detrimental mm -hmm. and it and it hurts people. It breaks relationships yeah. and and um and it's just sad. It's sad yes. that people think I just saw a gift. Um, about it was like a clip from something and it was saying let's you know let's gossip and um, you know to and it was like shining a light on it as if it was fun mm. and and like that's what girls do when they right. get together yeah. is they just gossip mm -hmm. and you don't leave a gossiping situation feeling good mm -hmm. about yep. yourself mm -hmm. but you leave a situation where you're with other women and you are encouraging each yeah. other and sharing mm -hmm. and transparency with each other and, and opening up the floor for you know for us to lift each other yeah, up and yeah. and encourage each other on that you leave feeling lighthearted mm -hmm. and you feel hope yeah yeah absolutely yeah and man i'm sure you have stories of growing up mm -hmm. and just the gossip mm -hmm. you know spiral basically yeah. is yeah. what it is and i remember i mean my my sister and i had two very close friends and the four of us would and it wasn't like we were doing it's it's never intentional yeah Mm -hmm. I feel like it's not like you don't come to someone's house mm -hmm. being like, well, maybe you do. I don't know, but <laughs> you don't come to someone's house and be like, Hey, Tasha, you know, let's come over and we'll talk about so-and-so mm -hmm. like, it's never something. Mm -hmm. It's just the way that the enemy likes to weasel in. Mm -hmm. And then you start having these feelings of, mm -hmm. about someone and maybe even feelings that you didn't even have that now I'm putting on you. Mm -hmm. And then it just continues the spiral. Yeah. And I know in high school I had a very big issue with gossiping and that's why I feel like honestly the Lord really wanted me to talk about this mm -hmm. not necessarily because of my history but just mm -hmm. well some in some ways yeah because yeah. that's why we're doing this but I know that we do a lot of times just say oh it's just what women do mm -hmm. and like you said it ruins relationships mm -hmm. and that the four of us our little relationship basically kind of just drifted away and then I know sometimes that's just what happens you know you're in different seasons and stuff but it wasn't in some ways it wasn't because we were doing great things and that was why we were separating it was more like we were talking about each other we were hurting mm -hmm. each other mm -hmm. and and it just wasn't a good place but you know what since then we have all come back together and we are really close and we don't talk about each other to each other mm -hmm. because of that that you want to give life you want yeah. to bring life to the relationship mm -hmm. and you want to be kind like I feel yeah. like sometimes even when you have been in a position of where you know what it's like to either be on the other side of the gossip mm -hmm. knowing that people are talking about you mm -hmm. now it almost makes you not want to be a part of mm -hmm. that and I like what you said about trying to steer the conversation the mm -hmm. other way because I have had to do that mm -hmm. and it's even that is still awkward you yeah. know where you're like okay um I guess I'm just gonna sit here or mm -hmm. you know and sometimes it's immediately like okay let's just let's just change the subject you know mm -hmm. and it can be like a lighthearted, and then they get it and and mm -hmm. feelings aren't hurt and mm -hmm. stuff but it is difficult to mm -hmm. kind of steer that conversation sometimes there's been times where I've been like praying in my head, Lord, just let this go. Like, mm -hmm. let this conversation be done. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, too, because women oftentimes are emotional and we can go deep mm -hmm. and we care about people. Yeah. And especially, I would say, like, I mean, honestly, I think among Christian women that this is an issue mm -hmm. where it's like, well, we're just sharing because right. we want to be praying. Yeah. You know, we want, we, I want to bring you in so that you can be praying for them, mm -hmm. too. Well, we have to be aware that, you know, there are times where you seek guidance and wisdom mm -hmm. from somebody else right. on a situation where maybe you are, um, you know, you truly are worried about somebody yeah. and you are their encourager mm -hmm. and you need to pull somebody else in yeah. to help to, to help you to navigate that. Um, but you have to be, you have to do that with wisdom. Right. And because it's very, very easy to step mm -hmm. into that. And, um, and it is, it's detrimental. I, I struggled yeah. with it too as a child, yeah. you know, and it, it ruined relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because there's no... You will ruin the ability to have transparency in a relationship when when you are perceived as a gossip. Mm -hmm. People yes. will not be yeah. transparent yeah. with you. No. And you cannot have the kind of intimate relationships that God designed mm -hmm. us to have yeah. if there's no transparency. Yeah. yeah, I agree. 
So we talked a little bit about relationships. What about like when we talked about in the beginning mm -hmm. with speaking life over yourself? Yeah. What does that kind of look like? On a daily basis, even. Yeah, it's, it is a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, daily yeah. Basis. Well, you know, the battle is in the mind. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and so we have to, when the, when the enemy comes at us every single day with with whatever it is that he attacks us with, yeah. it's, all, it's different for mm -hmm. each of us. We have to take that thought captive. We have to recognize it as a lie. As, mm -hmm. as a lie. And we need to speak that truth in life and to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so... I can recognize that um, that the thought is that's not a healthy thought. That's mm -hmm. not a thought. That's not rooted in truth. And really, that's what Jesus did when he was in when he was in the wilderness for forty days and forty nights. He was speaking life. Yeah. He was battling the enemy by speaking life mm -hmm. by saying that's a lie. Yeah. Here's the truth, mm -hmm. and that's what we have to do to ourselves, yeah. and that's what we do to others right. when we are speaking life to them. We're saying, listen, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. Here's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. My mom, it used to bother me, and now as I've gotten older, I'm like, yes! Mm -hmm. But she, anytime I would be complaining or frustrated about something, she would look at me and she would say, what is the truth? Mm, that's good. And what is the truth? Mm -hmm. You know, what mm -hmm. is the truth about who you are yeah. or the situation? Yeah. If you choose to find the truth in whatever you're going through, whether it's health or a relationship, mm -hmm you will be able to speak life. Mm -hmm. And I loved when you said the part about, when you're talking about speaking it out loud, I've also heard the same thing about that, you know, the enemy can't really hear your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so you have to speak it out for him to hear and actually say it out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And the power that comes with mm -hmm. that, it just, it feels so much better. And then when those words are spoken, you truly are like lifted. Mm -hmm. Well, we're taking back authority. Mm -hmm. So the enemy has no authority. That's right. He has power, but he mm -hmm. has no yep. authority except for what we give him. Yeah. And so when we speak that truth out loud, mm -hmm. it's taking back what's ours. Yeah, he doesn't have the authority to make us feel like we can't do things mm -hmm. or that we're stuck yeah. or that things are never going to change yeah. or, you know, like he doesn't have that authority. Mm -hmm. God is sovereign. It's in, he's in control. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's remembering that we have a father in heaven who loves us and who fights for us yeah. and who sees us and is in it with us yeah. and is shouldering us through all of life's difficulties and that we can trust in him and go to him mm -hmm. and that the enemy has no power yeah. over us yeah. absolutely. because he rendered him powerless in the cross. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I wanted to share was I was looking today back at some notes from a conference that I went to and there was a pastor, Morgan Irwin is is his name and he was talking about identity and I know we're not necessarily talking about identity but speaking life does fall into line Absolutely. with identity mm -hmm. and one of the things that he said that just really kind of has followed me you know I, I haven't been in California for like a couple of weeks but it really followed me was one thing that he was saying is we have a tendency to say I am hungry I am thirsty and he was like, no, you're not. Mm -hmm. I have hunger mm -hmm. and I have thirst. Mm -hmm. and, and he was saying a lot of times we put so much emphasis on I am. Mm -hmm. And he said the only I am that mm -hmm. you need to be saying is I am a child of God. Yes. And I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. And I am healed. And, mm -hmm. you know, the list goes on and it. It really just kind of has resonated with me in that speaking life mm -hmm. and that self-talk and mm -hmm. listening to those thoughts that you're saying and saying those instead of, you know, even, even some of the physical things like I am fat or I am mm -hmm. ugly or, mm -hmm. you know, it goes even beyond just being I'm hungry or thirsty, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and if we just switch that thought of I am this, mm -hmm. you know, even for you, whatever that word is for you, I am blank, mm -hmm. write that down and change that to I am a child of God, or mm -hmm. I am beautiful, I am lovely, I am blessed, I am favored. And it just, it changes the thought, it changes the perspective. You're, you're truly speaking out the truth that mm -hmm. we talked about yep. from the word, and, and that's where even the healing can come in. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah, I really, I just have, I've like been holding on to that, and I really feel like that, is something that we truly need to start doing where it's not 
I am this, but I am, you know, changing that to whatever God is saying about you. Mm -hmm. And even sometimes that means, you know, listening to what he's saying. So mm -hmm. staying quiet. And if, if you are feeling something, I am, you know, unlovable. Well, listen for what he has to say about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And he will speak his truth. And then you can say, no, that's the enemy's lie, but I am love. Mm -hmm. And often those feelings if we really sit with them and ask the Lord to reveal to us why we are feeling those feelings, it's because there's a need that we need to run to Jesus mm -hmm. to be filled. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, like with, when, when I, when we're encouraging people and, and we're speaking life to them, our, we're speaking truth to them and it's for a moment and like we say it, but then really like it has to enter their hearts. They, at the end of the day, they can't keep coming back to me or to you for, yeah. for encouraging words. They have to run to the Father. Yeah. And so that's that's when when people can when we learn that we have to that that's the source. Mm -hmm. That's who sustains us. And we don't we don't need necessarily people to do it. It's great right. when people come yeah. alongside yeah. us and physically yeah. do it, but he is the one mm -hmm. who says yeah. those things about us. He is the one who carries us through. Mm -hmm. And when we can really go to him and let him do that for yeah. us, everything starts to change. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as we kind of wrap up, what's like one thing that you could share for people to kind of really take away and make this like that day where they start speaking life? I would just challenge them, I think, to, um, to think about the way that they are speaking. Mm -hmm. Like, and really think about like, are your words speaking? life yeah. or are your words speaking death mm -hmm. and then really look at those relationships or those places where maybe you're not speaking life yeah. and I just challenge you to to, to bring life to that relationship mm -hmm. um, even when you don't feel like it you know mm -hmm. you know we all go through hard times and and just because um, I might be walking through a really difficult season doesn't mean I'm off the hook right. from using yeah. my spiritual yeah. gift of speaking life. Yeah. Even though like I might be crying mm -hmm. 10 minutes before right. and just like asking the, the Lord to just help me get through those moments. Mm -hmm. He might the next minute bring somebody into my life who I'm called to encourage. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I, when I choose to walk out mm -hmm. the gift that he's given me and, and, and when you choose to speak life into relationships, even when you don't feel like yeah. it, yeah, that's um, it. God has a God has a way of just working yes. and blessing that. Yes. And so, if you have a relationship where um, maybe it's challenging and maybe you have been speaking death, try speaking life, mm -hmm. even if it's just one word, yeah. you know. And even if you feel like you can't open your mouth to do it, just ask the Lord to give you the strength mm -hmm. to speak through you. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's your marriage, and maybe you're you feel like you're just torn down all the time, and and you don't want to encourage, you don't want to bring. Um, anything positive out of your mouth to to your spouse but I promise you mm -hmm. that he can fill yeah. you and he can sustain you yeah. and he can give you the ability to speak something into that relationship that he desires for you to do to be a leader and that can change the whole tone mm -hmm. of of that relationship and so I guess that's what I would that's what I would yeah. challenge you to do yeah. Because yeah, it, it's it works. Mm -hmm. It, it, it just works. It and it works for you too. Something mm -hmm. happens to us. Yeah. When we open our mouths up and we use it to bring life, mm -hmm. we receive life. Yeah. Just like when we open our mouth and we use it to, to tear people mm -hmm. down, we receive death. Right. And I I actually was thinking of this earlier, just like how you physically feel. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. even when you said when, when you leave typically like when you a gossip fest, mm -hmm. like you don't feel really good mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. you know? And even if, if you've spewed out an ugly word or you were frustrated with something and you just were spewing out ugliness, it, mm -hmm. you don't feel good about it, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, obviously, that, like, there's going to be moments where that's going to happen mm -hmm. and you ask God to forgive you, and he will. But, you know, the more that you speak life, the easier it becomes, mm -hmm. I feel like. Absolutely. Where, you know, it's easier for me to even think, okay, I might be going through this right now, but I know that God is still there, that he is still faithful, mm -hmm. that he is still caring and he still loves me. He still is kind. And if we think of those things, the truth, the word mm -hmm. of God, like that is one of the things that we 
I would challenge too mm-hmm. to pick up the word of God. You know, the more time you spend in the word, then the more you're going to spew out the word. And, and the word is life. Yes. So that's good. Well, thank you, Tasha. Yeah, thanks for, for having me. me. Yes. It's fun. Yeah, this is good. So we will see you guys again next time. And go ahead and check out the other interviews also. We've had several about healing and joy and anxiety. So we would love for you to check those out too.